Hey guys, welcome back to another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing a white scar scheme, much like the last tutorial I did with the Death Watch. This is going to be like a dreary scheme using light to implement into our color scheme. And we're starting out with dark stone. And I have this really wet, and we're just going to be shading, you know, the direction where the light's coming from. We're going to be shading behind the model, creating uh, the light that we're basing these uh, these starting colors out with. So all these will be the undertones. And so I want the light to come from over his right shoulder and so we're shading behind and underneath the uh, left side of the model. So that's what he's looking like after the dark stone. And we're not worried about being neat here. This is just, you know, where we think the uh, shadows would be. Next, we're using Crusted Sword. This is a, a reddish purple. And we're just placing this right in front of that dark zone. Not worrying about overlaps or, you know, blending the paint or anything right now. These are just the undertones. So with this, we'll be implementing the light as well as maintaining a weathered looking uh, color scheme. So that's what it's looking like after the crusted sword is on there. And then for the final undertone, we're using Skeleton Bone. And so all this will be more directed on the left side of the model. I have a little more pigment with this. Uh, not so much watery as the last two. Because the model is mostly going to be a shade of white, red, and gray. So I'm just putting this where I think it would be lighter. So we got all three of our undertones based. And this is what he's looking like. And again, just showing, you know, light the shadow while having a unique set of colors that we can build off of. So now I'm using Necrotic Flesh. This is a uh, greenish tint, and we're just going over and not really edge highlighting, but basically this color we'll be using to blend to blend those colors and I think it has a really cool effect because you can see, still see like the strokes and stuff from before on the previous steps but this just helps tone it down a bit next I'll be using toxic mist and this will make our model a little bit cooler temperature to where when we start uh, applying the next layers you know over this it won't be so muddy brown looking especially using white over top of like a, a tan or really muted color so this will give us a cooler temperature at the same time we're highlighting you know all the lightest parts in the model keeping lighting in mind and then here I'm what I'm doing with the uh, toxic mist is I did a little white mix with it and we're just adding texture to the model because we want to make this look weathered and at the same time we're using this to highlight and implement where the white would hit so there's a little bit of edging there's some stippling using this mix but we're still maintaining the lighting direction
and while I was at it, I just went ahead and, you know, edged and added some highlights to the weapons. So this is what we're looking like after that. It, it's cooled down our model using that lighter blue as well as uh, highlighting. So now I'm just using a watered down white and not necessarily using it like a wash but basically tinting everywhere where I, I highlighted with those previous layers. And this will just help unify and bring everything together. And I did two layers of that step. So after the first wet layer, I, I let that dry and then I went back and did, did it again. And now I'm just doing the same thing, except for I'm just using straight white. Thinned it down and we're doing the same thing we did with the toxic mist. We're just highlighting, stippling, adding texture where I think it would make sense. They give us a cool uh, a cool lidded model over the shoulder while still uh, having like a grimy texture, a dreary color scheme. So now I'm just using this green wash, uh, the game ink, and we're just shading over all the uh, darker areas. And I figure this will make our uh, lighter colors pop a little more, making the shadows a little darker and adding a, a different color to it. The green, I think, looked good. And then using the black, I just went ahead, the black gaming. We uh, just went ahead and washed the uh, weapons and went around in all the crevices, like around the pads, anything metal. I washed with this game ink and again we're doing we're mixing this with water just to thin it down like a wash while following the rules of where our shadows would be for the most part so that's what we're looking like so far after the, the green ink and the black ink. And we went ahead and shaded like all the, uh, the soft joint pieces in between the armor. Next I'm using tan flesh and uh, the elven skin and we're using these colors to paint his emblems and so I, I base it with the tan flesh and then I'll go back with the, the elven flesh and we'll just highlight his sigils and stuff now I figure these colors would look good especially after a uh, the, uh, the skin wash ink game ink Applying that over that would get it give it that reddish tone. And then I washed it with a uh, red tone wash after the skin wash just to darken it up a bit and then I, I use that same scheme on you know the uh, the hilts on his sword on his uh, the sheath as well as those sigils
that's what we're looking like. Next, I'm going to use the red game ink. And we're painting his white scar emblem on his shoulder. And I'm also thinning, you know, everything that I do down with water. And then I went back with uh, just a black ink and shaded around the sigils and things. And I went ahead and for the main chest emblem, I just shaded with that red that I put on the white scar emblem on the shoulder. I figured that looked, uh, that looked better with having a more reddish tint. And we wiped out the eyes and trimmed the weapons out with the white, keeping it thin, not going fully opaque with it. And then we shaded it with black game ink. And we just used the red ink in the eye. And that is pretty much it. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Uh, I'll probably do a, uh, a three times quick effective paint scheme for White Scars too, showing a dry brush and an airbrush and then a mix of both. But I figured this uh, dreary scheme would be a cool idea for White Scars as well. Since this is a new paint scheme that I'm trying out on miniatures. But uh, we'll see y'all next time. Later.